Well, mile zero, ground zero, right there. Welcome. This is actually a uh, Coast Salish territory. We're standing on Lekwungen territory. Um, respect out to all Lekwungen people. I guess Lekwungen is uh, a dialect for the Songhees and the Swimals and other people, Aboriginal around this area. So when we say Lekwungen, that's kind of like a respectful way to include everybody in here. Like, whose territory is this? My name is Mike Sheehan. I'm from Beothic Nation territory, aka St. John's Newfoundland. My mother and father and everybody's from there. Like three generations. My grandfather was a he worked on boats. I understand the, there was a lot of boats back then in there, those times. And, and and the reason I the reason I say that is because all the Aboriginal people who were occupied that land we call Newfoundland now. They're gone. The Beothic, the last woman, her name was Shauna Beethut. And so the Beothic tradition and culture is um, completely wiped out. And I just figured that out probably when I was 19 years old, traveling the world, thinking I was really poor, low middle class guy from Newfoundland, blue collar family, you know, scraped together some, some money to make a backpacker trip. And after I began bumping into Aboriginal people in different continents, I realized that I'm one of the richest, most privileged people on this whole entire globe. How could have I got it wrong? Then I went back to Newfoundland and I was living in Nova Scotia at that time and that's when I first met black people for the first time and that was awesome and it changed my life. And when I got there, my friends, it was, it was a little, it was challenging. It was like, you know, can't you see the world is still alive for us? The opportunity and the privilege that we have, like, I'm just trying to work and trying to get a job and make life happen. And it was from the, um, my backpacker travel and just the, the wide-eyed curiosity in me. And if you get to know me, you'll think Mike Sheehan is one curious guy, for sure. And it was that curiosity that led me into meeting some of these Aboriginal characters in my history. And when I came back to Canada, I realized, like, I've got to gotta get a job. I can't let tree planting for seven years in a row. It's not a career. I can't do that as a career. What am I going to do? And it was about groups. And it was about people getting to understand and getting to meet and know each other. And that's my modus operandum, and it's what drives me. I'm 34 years old now. I run a, a company called Beatboard Education and Training. And I do work with the school district. I do school-wide intervention programs around bullying, around native, non-native relationships. I work with uh, the Aboriginal communities around Vancouver Island, Sayao, Pachidot, Saikum, Sartlet, Songhee, Swimalt, and starting now a little bit more to speaking at conferences. And something I find uh, about conferences is, and not this one so far, is I find them a uh, consumptive experience. And someone will come up here and then just fill the audience up with information. And then it's like, oh, you're better off. Take that information and, and go for it. And what I realized is in these audiences, in any kind of conference or gathering, there is so much intelligence in the audience. And how could we find some kind of design where the intelligence could rise to the surface so that we could learn from each other? So I'm really into social architecture. And I'm into the design of groups and group gatherings. And I could talk about it all afternoon. But, um, but I won't right now. But what I think we should do a little bit is, I don't know if the house lights could come up a little bit. And um, Holly in the booth up there, um, majoring in technology here, if you could um, just bring in a little musical, some musical selection for us. And um, maybe we'll just get a little bit warm here together, and we're going to warm up our right and our left brain. You might have heard of um, mental aerobics a little bit right there. So just like. Sit up in your seat a little bit there. Relax your shoulders if you can. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And if everyone take one hand and just go ahead and make a circle like this, one circle in the air, just enjoy this, just smile. And feel your right brain and your left brain in harmony when you make an X with the other hand like this. Yeah, that's it. Just like that one circle, one X. Warming up, shake that one out, shake that one out, good. Make a circle with the other hand like this. Doing great, yeah. But this time make a triangle. One circle, one triangle. Yeah. You got that? All right. 
Sweet, sweet. All right, shake that one out. Shake that one out. Give, give somebody a high five. Someone a high five. So let's do this. Let's do this. All right. One circle towards you. Increasing the challenge. One circle towards you. And one circle away from you. You got that? Cr cross at the top. Cross at the bottom. Cross at the top. Cross at the bottom. Shake that one out. Point one finger at me like this. One thumb in the air. Now notice, when you're pointing, there's no thumbs. So no guns, just a point and just a thumb. And I want you to feel your right brain and your left brain in communication with each other when you switch. Yeah. Nice, nice. Switch, switch, switch. You got that one? You got that one right here? All right, give yourselves a round of applause. Getting warm. All right, all right. All right. Okay, right here in the audience right now, what I want is I want, I want four people. I want four individuals to just put up your hand. Four individuals, put up your hand. Just like that. All right, go ahead, stand up. Thank you very much. That's one. All right, go ahead, stand up. That's two. Thank you. Two more, two more. Right here. All right, that's three dudes, four dudes. We're going to have a little diversity here. One more person. Yeah, okay, thank you. And okay, why don't you go ahead and stand up right there. It's simple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, you can stand up. All right, house lights up a little bit. Here's an activity. When I say go, we want you to stand up as individuals. Stay standing for anywhere up to six, eight, ten seconds, and then take a seat by yourself. When one person sits down, that means any other person at random needs to stand up so that always there's four people standing at all times. How many people standing at all times? How many? All right, all right. That's it. Tap your neighbors, look behind you and say, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this together. All right, here we go. One, two, stay standing, you four. Ready and go. Go. And then they're going to sit down at random, one of them. Boom. And someone's going to jump up. Someone's going to jump up. That's it. Manage yourself. Keep it going. Keep it going. Right. And while this is playing out, four people at all times, I want you to think of this. Am I the person who always stands up and gets involved in these activities? What would it feel like to sit back and chill? Good job. Am I the person who never participates in activities like that? I want you to think, what would happen if I did today? Good job. Good job. All right, now we're going to start speeding it up. That's it, that's it. That's it. All right, pause right there. You're doing excellent. Now, with these people standing, I want three other people next to them to stand up with them. Stay standing. Three people next to that person stand up with them in support. Now, I want you to think about this. Am I the person who makes invitations? Can I turn around and meet someone new and get them, hey, you want to be involved in this thing? You're welcome to. And I want you to invite. So when I say go this time, some group of four. Some group of four. So you guys just have, you guys just chill, relax. You're a group of four. One group will sit down at a time, and then another group of four will pop up so that there's four groups of four standing at all times. All right, here we go. Ready? Go, go, here we go. Boom, let's sit down. Another group of four. Are you making the invitation? Good. Let's see it. I like it. I like it. All right, all right. Reach out. Look behind you. Invite someone into the action. Yes. Two there. <laughs> All right. And everybody have a seat. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, Holly, for the music. Thank you. You can cut the music right now, DJ Holly in the booth. Thanks a lot. All right.
Now, I find in theater style gatherings that this is a little fun one to get the audience charged because I know that there's people sitting behind you and beside you that you, you saw them, you maybe bumped their knees when you were walking in to catch your seat. So it's like, oh, I just don't know them, I can't talk to them. There's social etiquette and boundaries. And those, that social etiquette and those boundaries, I think it's a largely a cultural thing too. I think there's many different protocols. For every different culture, I think it has its own protocol. And I think when we're looking at learning about difference across lines of difference, we're trying to learn about the other, my guess is, and you nod your head if you're with me on this one, is that we are afraid sometimes of making a mistake and offending somebody. So instead we say nothing. True or false? True. This is fair. And I was like, oh, I have a question, but is that question right? Do they have a different experience than me? And we don't say anything about all. Oh. So I find, and I get asked a lot to speak in Aboriginal communities. And I'm a straight white male from Newfoundland, like homogenous Newfoundland. And I think I get asked back because I'm, I'm like this little audacious creature who dares to say things and dares to name, name culture and to talk about colonization and trying to understand the genocide of the Beothic nation in my place where I live and that we're here in Lekwungen territory. And I find if I stay silent about it, I don't learn. When I speak up about it, I learn. When I speak up about it, I also make mistakes sometimes. But I find if I can learn and that I've made a mistake and I can learn in that moment and I can show some humbleness or vulnerability in it, then just as quick as I made that mistake, I'm getting that respect back. Because everybody knows like that information is going to trickle down. Just cross your arms, cross your chest like this. And put a look on your face like something smells bad. <laughs> that right there, that's the tough look. And tough is the new insecure. And you might notice that with your arms crossed across your chest, you're protecting your heart, right? Tough, the new insecure. Protecting your heart, it's like a shield. So how are we learning? Especially, and I work with a lot of young people too, and adults, and elders, and we're still walking around this world unconscious of patterns, habits, and tendencies that each of us have. That we've been practicing things from our childhood, unknowingly and unconsciously bringing them into our adult life. And I think one of them is this pattern of unconscious protection. And what would it feel like you know, to open your arms and to show your heart and be a little bit more vulnerable? Well, let me give you an illustration. Notice if your arms cross. I just want you to notice and keep your arms here with me for a sec. Notice which arm's on top. And then think, damn, have I always put that arm on top? Hold your arms there. And I want you to think, how old was I when I first crossed my arms? How many times in my life have I crossed my arms? How many times have I practiced a behavior on top? A hundred. Relax your arms. And all together, our job is to just simply be aware of the sensation of trying something new, the new feeling. So on the count of three, we're all going to count together. We want you to slam your arms into the new cross position. Nod your head if you're with me. You with me? All right, let's count together. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Yeah. How many of you actually didn't even do it right? You didn't even manage to. All right, relax your arms. We're going to practice two more times. Go. And again, go. How does that new way feel? Shout it out. Awkward, strange, weird, difficult. All right, all right. Unprofessional. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's my guess, too. And we're looking at social change, environmental and economic sustainability. And the thing is, our societies, not only just individuals, our societies have been practicing unconscious behavior since their childhoods as well. And then we ask a generation, we ask a society to try something new. Come, out, come with us and try something new. We forget to understand sometimes that that newness feels awkward, strange, or even unprofessional sometimes in doing this. We ask ourselves, what are the costs and the gains of doing this? And all I can think of is, as soon as I ask you to do this activity, or to make a circle in an X. In your brain, if that was the first time you had ever tried that, 
then you're physically, you have grown new synapses. You have made new neural connections in your brain. Every single time we try anything new, we create more neural pathways. And I think that whenever we feel this challenge, or like, this is awkward, I don't do this, I don't speak in front of people, I don't sing, no, I can't get up and, and draw on the thing, because that's something new for me. If we can start to support our society, elders, adults, and young people, that, hey, that feeling, that freshness, that that's something that we're excited about, that that's something to look out for. I don't do that because I don't like that. I don't do that, I'm not good at that. We can shift that pattern and habit and tendency and turn it into something that's exciting, then we're going to have an opportunity to start to make some connections across these lines of difference. I'm going to, I'm going to come back in the second half, and I've been invited here as a, as a performer. So this is somewhere between a, a talk and a performance. But in the second half, um, I'm going to come back with a couple other group um, experiments for us to to perform on each other. But to set it up, what I want you to do now, and if the house lights can come up in just a little bit, when I say go, I want you to turn to your side, I want you to turn around, I want you to find yourself into a group of five, a group of four, or a group of two. I want you to share your full name, if you're comfortable doing that, or just your first name, your choice. If, you, if your name has a meaning or a story of how you got it, or if it doesn't, share that. I want you to share something about your ancestry on, a, on your mother's side or father's side and go back anywhere you can. I'd like you just to say something about your cultural ancestry. And then I'd like you to say something about yourself that you would be surprised to know. So my intention in doing this is about breaking patterns and breaking paradigms. So this is not just a consumptive experience, it's more interactive. But to take it that step further and to start meandering through that either graceful or awkward conversation around culture and identity. And then share what, something about yourself that the other people would be surprised to know. And then we'll pick it up right back from there. Nod your head if you're with me. All right, let's turn some light music on again, Holly. Now, oh yeah, when I say go, your job is, is mostly to make the other people feel comfortable. So, so to make this irresistible and great for them. Please look around and please include everybody in the activity. Go ahead, go ahead, enjoy. If you feel that resistance, turn it into curiosity. That's it. Have a look around. Is there anybody left behind? <laughs> 10. Finishing up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. If you can hear me, clap five times. All right, go ahead, take a seat really quick. All right. We're going to finish in two seconds, and then we'll invite Missy coming back up to let us know about the break. All right. I'll leave you with this. My name is, my name is Mike Sheehan. I'll be back again in the second half to pick this up. Um, like I say, behavior is catchy. Every single thing we say, every single thing we do, we make that normal for people around us. And if our behaviors, we realize, as soon as we discover a behavior, a pattern, or a tendency in ourselves, we instantly get a choice to cultivate that behavior because it works or to try something new. And you know the definition of insanity, right? Is trying the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So if you're the shy person, can I show hands? If you're the shy person, I want you to introduce yourself to someone like, hey, hi, like, hey, my name's Mike. Nice to see you here. Yeah, look something like that for a shy person. And, um, um, 
And for someone who talks a lot too, like maybe when you're in a conversation, maybe you could hang back a little bit and see if other people fill in the space. Behavior is patchy. Let's try and shift our paradigm to start it here on the micro, and then we can look at how we can do it as leaders on a sort of broader scale. I understand there's a break coming up. Linda, right, Missy. I'm Mike. Thanks a lot, everybody.